Hello, everyone. Consistent hashing is a very important and interesting topic in distributed system. It's also very popular in system design. So today, let's take a look at what consistent hashing is. OK, let's start with a simple example. Assuming we have a cache server and an application server, like we only have one single machine for each. So my application server will call put and get from our cache servers. For example, the key may be a username, the value may be some other information, for example, address. So I can put, for example, Tom at, uh, address one to this cache server. And after that, I can try to get Tom's address. And if it's a cache miss, um, then I cannot get it. I need to fetch it from database. If it's a cache hit, then I can just fetch my data from cache server. Cache server is like um, in memory database. So all data is in memory. So it's very fast to do query or like update. Otherwise, without cache server, we need to fetch it from database. We know uh, for database, all, all the uh, information is stored in the disk, so the IO is slow. So that's why we prefer to have a cache server layer to speed up um, a lot of stuff, for example, query. OK, if, um, if our application only have a few servers, then one application server and one cache server, that sounds good. But there may be like more and more users. So we may have 10 or 100 application server. In this case, if we only have one single cache server, then it will like too much for the cache server, right? You need to um, process maybe hundreds of requests per second. So one single machine is not enough. Okay, now we can deploy more cache server in this case. For example, assuming we have four cache server now. Yeah, so far so good, we have four. So we can process more requests. But there's one important question. Which cache server should I send request to? For example, now I need to query, um, I need to fetch like um, Tom's address. I have four cache server. Which one stores Tom's information? Okay, then there's a simple solution. First, we can hash the key, for example, Tom. Tom is string. We can hash our string and we can mode four. Since there are four machines, so if the value is zero, then we go to first machine and so on. If the value is three, then we go to the last cache server. OK, so far so good. For Tom, we, we just hash, hash it, then mode four. Assuming the value is two, then we just uh, send a request to this cache server. OK, assuming um, we have those usernames and uh, after hash and mode four, they are um, placed in their corresponding cache server. OK, next, uh, we, like, uh, um, the users of our application doubled. So we need to deploy more cache server. OK, assuming we are adding a new cache server instance here. OK, then there's a problem. Now we have five cache server. So hash the key, we need to mode five here. But it will cause a very big problem. We have a lot of cache mates. For example, for Bob, previously we hash key mode four is three. But now we add one more machine. Next time when people query Bob, we need to hash Bob then mode five. So in, the value may be changed, maybe one. So there are a lot of cache mates. Like, uh, like almost all of the cache will be invalidated. So it's a big problem. Same as uh, this problem, uh, like what if an instance is down? Now we only have three available instance. So after hash the key, we need to move three here. So like previously, and Rodrigo is starting in cache server two, but now I went to move three. So after move three, it may be in zero or one. It's also cache miss. So adding an instance or um, like losing an instance will cause the same problem. So it's not very good for uh, scaling our application. So we need a better solution that uh, can scale very well. Okay, what should we do? So now comes consistent hashing. 
assuming we have a hash ring here, like uh, the hash space is from zero to two to three minus one, which is the uh, um, biggest value of the unsigned integer, so, uh, 32 bit unsigned integer. So assuming uh, in, your, in our mind, it's like this, address zero, one, two, then there are a lot hash space. And the last one, also the biggest one is two to three minus one. Okay, so we need to hash each cache server with a unique key. For example, we can hash the IP address or we can hash host name. Assuming I have four cache server. So after hashing, like that place at those four positions. Okay, next, assuming I want to um, put minus three. So the question here, which instance should I choose to put this key? Okay, so we need to hash memory. Assuming the value of hash memory is here, then we will choose server two. We will do clock, uh, clockwise like this. For each key after the hash, hash value, we just find the nearest machine that's in clockwise. Okay, so for memory, we choose server two. Like assuming Tom and Anna like are here, so they are starting in server one. What if we add this server four here? Here we add one more cache server instance, right? Previously in our uh, like old solution, adding an instance will cause almost all the cache mess, invalidated all the cache. But for hash ring, assuming we are adding this server four. Like, what keys are impacted or what keys are affected? We know only the keys between server three and this new server, right? Which is Tom. So only Tom is mapped to server four. So it's very good. So only items between server three and server four are affected. We know Tom in this case. So only a few keys are affected. Assuming that what if server three is done? Assuming um, be before the server three is done, and we have Anna. Anna is here, so the key is starting server three. Jack is here, the key is starting server one. If server three is done, we know for all the keys between server zero and server three, they need to remap to server one. So, and then any items between server zero and server three are affected. So Anna in this case. So, so if one instance is done, only a few keys are affected. Okay, so far so good. But there's still some problems. Let's think about this case. Um, if if um, after the hashing of those four cache servers, their value are very close. For example, uh, they are all hashed to a sim similar numbers, maybe one, like 100, 1000. Uh, They're very close. So a lot of keys are mapped to server two here. So for those keys, they need to store in server two, which means like uh, server two receives a lot of requests. So server two may be done since almost all the keys are mapped to server two. So for all my application server, they send a lot of requests to server two. So it may crash server two. Okay, after server two is done, we know, then all the keys need to unshift it to server zero. Then server zero will be crashed again. Then server three and so on. So all the cache servers are crashed one by one. At last, my cache is unavailable. Okay, so it's a very big problem. How can we solve this problem? So the key idea here is we try to um, make the cache server, like the distribution of my cache server uniform. Have some... Okay, so solution here, um, I just take two server as the example. So solution here, we can try to create some more uh, vir virtual nodes for example, for server zero, we can create three virtual nodes. 
for each virtual server, like we we can hash like um like for example for server one we can hash IP plus um uh, dash zero dash one dash two to make three virtual nodes. Then like I said, for server one we we have three virtual nodes. For server zero we also have three virtual nodes, and uh, for this virtual nodes I have a table to map the virtual nodes to the physical server. So after hashing a key, then since we created much more virtual nodes, so the distribution of all my keys is not that bad. For example, one key is here, it will start in server zero. One key is here, it will be stored in server one. So that's the improvement. Okay, so far so good. And uh, I think that's all the content today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.